at the Web Summit, and I think this is the last talk before lunch. So I completely understand you want to hear what's going on, and then you want to go socialize and get lunch. So the world of work today, really this talk is about how the world of work today is so much has so much changed from what we're used to and what the business world grew up to be. How do we be effective and collaborate and create ideas and great work that technology enables? So I want you to think about this. We're all here because we love technology. We love the new things. We want to know what's new in, in, on devices. We want to know what's new with apps. What hasn't changed about the world of work in thousands of years? What hasn't changed? It's the people. It's our minds. It's how we use our intellect and our passion and how what we believe is possible to make things happen. And as a matter of fact, it's people who drive transformation and who drive how the world of work creates value and creates missions that people want to go on together. And so if we think about that, that technology is really the enabler for the human beings, for the people, to make change happen, then the possibilities today are endless compared to what they used to be. I think there's three, th three key themes that we should think about as we think about the future of the world of work, which is starting right now with how different it is today. First, it's about embracing different work styles. And what do I mean by that? I'm going to talk about that in just a minute. The second is about engaging customers on their terms. No matter how big of a brand you are, or no matter how cool of a startup you are, your customers, people considering your brand, are the ones defining what brands mean, are the ones defining what your brand means today. It's not you as a representative of your company, it's the market. How do you do that? How do you nurture that? And the third, and I think the most powerful, which we'll talk about a little bit later, is empowering and engaging your employees. Empowering and engaging your workforce, the people that represent you using technology every single day. So work styles and embracing different work styles. If you think about your lifestyle five years ago, 10 years ago, isn't it very different than how you live your life today? You don't have a difference in what's your personal life, what's your work life, how do you manage those different things at different times of the day? You actually have a whole interconnected lifestyle, which includes your work, and especially in tech. You're constantly on and you're constantly communicating and connecting, whether it's little bits or whether it's big projects. And so if you think about lifestyle really impacting our work style, we as individuals and all the people we employ and work with every day really expect a completely different bar in how they engage with their work. It needs to be simple. It needs to be intuitive. It needs to be instantly accessible. Because if you don't provide that, they're going to be able to find their own way regardless and be splintered throughout your workforce versus unified. And so embracing different work styles and bringing people together, whether it's multicultural, across geographies, multi-generational, all of these work styles together, if you know how to unify them, yes, get them off email and get a team, groups, companies collaborating really together on big projects and small interactions that are meaningful helps bring those work styles together and leverage everybody's strength. A smarter, more connected workforce. The point of engaging customers on their own terms, look at some of the biggest and best brands in the world. They do this really, really well. Again, whether you're a small company, a medium-sized company, or a big company, you have aspirations to have the best customer relations you can possibly have. It leads to renewal, and it, re it leads to new prospects that become customers. And these are just companies that I think are doing it really well, both online and offline. But if the world of work 
and I know we all know this, is digitizing to the nth degree. You can digitize for effectiveness, you can digitize for efficiency, but what does that enable for you to be able to do to nurture customer relationships? Those who do it well actually reap the rewards in the marketplace. They're growing faster, they're more profitable, and they actually demand and get a pretty high premium for their goods, services, and products. Those who are not are falling behind. They get pushed into more of a commodity sale, driving price down, because it's really what you're left to negotiate with. Engaging in the digital world with your customers to nurture and really help them to find your brand for you and spread that word is critically important. Today, about 30% of companies have a specific digital customer community strategy, and they are the customers who are really driving the wave of what's going to happen next. IDC predicts 80% of companies will have a strategy like that only by 2017. So we're going to see over the next year and a half a tremendous amount of companies exploring this more and more because public social networks are not necessarily as optimized as they could be for your intimate, distinct, contextual customer relationship. It has to be integrated into how do you actually have that at a level that's specific for your brand. And the third thing I talked about, and I hinted, I personally think this is the most important, engaging and empowering employees to be with you on your mission. You know, today, um, there's lots of studies about this, but one that really kind of hits me hard is disengaged employees outnumber engaged employees two to one. So when you think about recruiting and keeping your teams, you got 50% of the total workforce that you're actually aiming for, the ones who want to be engaged and driven to a mission. And then of the, that 50%, you're trying to hire the best and brightest, and you're trying to keep them on your mission together. It's a hard, hard thing in today's world. So how do you drive that collaboration and that connection to what you're trying to accomplish? Companies who have the highest level of engaged employees and engaged meaning that they're actually working towards the mission, believe in the direction of the company, and are constantly taking action to help associate the company with those objectives, have all of the good stats you want going up, and those who don't have all the bad stats going down. So there's a real business case to invest in people, the people that are enabled by the great technology that you give them. Now, as a matter of fact, Jive, we've um, surveyed our customers, and we do on a regular basis, of what kind of return are you getting in working in this new way, in doing it differently than you've done it before. And our customers reported some astounding things for us um, in terms of the value. 28% uh, in 20%, 20, sorry, 28 increase in productivity from customers who are using uh, the product the way that um, is intended for collaboration. 90% up on job satisfaction. And this is their own internal evaluation of how their employees feel. More connected to their colleagues, driving against what they're trying to achieve. And a decrease in time, 30% in onboarding. And that's a pretty major productivity stat. And so we can see that working in an environment where you're really using technology in a way to collaborate, get work done, simple, intuitive, and easy is incredibly important to the power of your workforce. And it leads me to, as I think about the sharing economy, the sharing economy today is about goods and services. We can instantly get a car service like Uber and not have to pay too much attention except with the click of a finger. Or we can get a really cool place to stay in a hotel or accommodations that are like not like a hotel. I think the sharing economy is actually going to move to the sharing of people. 
Because all of the trends and all the indications of how we work today and the trends that are driving us on how we're going to work tomorrow lead to we're going to be sharing our minds, our thoughts, our ideas, not just with one company, but in collaboration with others. I may be working on a big project, a small project, with this brand and with that brand, and sh the sharing of people is going to become critically important to the advancement of the world of work. There's actually the majority of people report that they need a completely different type of work environment than most companies are providing today. They want freedom to use the tools that are going to help them liberate and, and, and be able to work from anywhere. They want freedom to be able to pick technology that really helps them get their work done. The majority of the people want this kind of flexibility or they choose another company. The majority of the people want to be able to work remotely. Working remotely me might actually mean higher productivity because you're actually focused on the task of the day or the collaboration project of the day with your team members. And those who report that say, you know what, if my, if my new employer isn't going to let me work at home or work remotely or give me that freedom to choose, as long as I uh, contribute with my objectives, I might choose to work somewhere else. So the reason that I think the future of work is now is that if we as employers, as partners, and as brands don't embrace a lot of what's happening in the trends, we're actually going to be stepping out of the talent and allowing our competitors to move forward more quickly. I think there's five things to think about. One is that innovation and technology and creativity doesn't just happen in startups. It happens in startups, but boy, big companies need that thinking too. And so the trend of entrepreneurship and allowing people in small teams to create things that companies have never allowed before is exhilarating and, and exciting for people to join. Freelancers, not necessarily everybody's going to be a full-time employee. Sharing of people and of minds and thinking of uh, and insights is going to become more of a standard. Bring your own whatever. <laughs> it's not just a device. It's whatever you need, think, or drive to be able to get your work done. The quantified self isn't just about millennials. It's about all of us. It's about multi-generational workforces working together, being able to give feedback and quickly know, am I on track, am I off track? How am I aligned with my peers, my boss? That doesn't need to be a big process. That just needs to be built into how I work with technology. And of course, working from anywhere at any time and being able to connect and communicate. And so that's what leads to the power of connection really being the most important thing in the future of work. All of the great technology that we innovate, all of the great technology that we adopt, how do we use it as humans to drive an additional power of connection with the teams, groups, and companies that we work with to be able to get great work done in ways that we haven't been able to accomplish before? If you're interested in our theories around this, and actually our vendor agnostic kind of way of looking at how does the digital world lead to taking advantage of all of these trends. You can just take a visit to us at jivesoftware.com. We've got a number of white papers on the topic, and I was really pleased to be able to talk to you here today. Thanks.